Hello everybody, today is November 24, 2021, Thanksgiving Eve. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And Mason in Corner, New York, if you're watching, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. So, it being Thanksgiving Eve, that means it was 50 years ago to today that D.B. Cooper skyjacked a Boeing 727 airliner and jumped out of the aft stair of that airplane with a $200,000 cash ransom. And the mystery still endures today because that man has still never been found or identified. So that has always been my favorite mystery of all time. So I did not want this day to pass without at least doing an upload about it. I wanted to go live, but apparently uh, if you've never gone live before on YouTube, it takes 24 hours after you request to go live. So uh, sorry I wasn't able to do that, but I will do that in the future probably for a, a Zodiac video or something like that. But anyway, D.B. Cooper... Uh, I've loved that case. First heard about it, of course, if you watched my other videos I've done on D.B. Cooper. It was uh, the show In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. Of course, that's Mr. Spock. He covered it in 1979. And then later on, the show Unsolved Mysteries with the great Robert Stack uh, did a show on D.B. Cooper in 1987. I think they did actually two shows on D.B. Cooper, but one was a little longer version. But after seeing both of those, I was just hooked. I just wanted to know who this guy was, and I was... Just whatever it took. I just at one point I just did not want to leave this earth until I found out who that guy was, and uh, did a little bit of research on it. Was never really active on the DB Cooper message boards, but I'd like to read them from time to time. But what got me back into the case was listening to an attorney from Washington named Galen Cook. He came on the Coast to Coast AM. And he was talking about the case and a suspect that he found named William Gossett, who later changed his name to Wolfgang Gossett. And I just loved the research this guy did. He was really articulate speaking about this suspect, Gossett. And uh, I really liked Gossett as a suspect. I was thinking, this guy's figured it out. I liked it. You know, I, I didn't tell a whole lot of people. I just thought, you know, I think this guy is onto something with, with uh, Wolfgang Gossett. And Cook was going to write a book about him, and he never wound up doing that. He, he, of course, went on Coast to Coast a couple more times that I that I listened to and liked. And uh, at some point, he just gave up the whole D.B. Cooper thing, and he moved up to Alaska to practice law because he was just getting too sucked into what they call the D.B. Cooper vortex. So I don't know really why he gave up on it all. And eventually, Goss had, you know, has stayed a pretty good suspect, and he's probably actually my second favorite suspect in the whole D.B. Cooper caper. And uh, there's other few I like as well. I like Kenny Christensen for a lot of reasons. Of course, he worked for the airline. And uh, it looked like he had come into some money right after the skyjacking. There's a Brad Meltzer show called Decoded about Kenny Christensen that folks focuses on him. It's on YouTube. You should check out. And, uh, you know, just plenty of other suspects that came along that I like. Of course, Robert Rackstraw comes up. He was a Vietnam veteran. Uh, Richard McCoy was a Vietnam veteran. He was a helicopter pilot. Of course, Richard McCoy pulled off a similar uh skyjacking about five months after the db cooper skyjacking and a lot of people think mccoy was db cooper of course there's a lot of negatives against richard mccoy being db cooper one was that mccoy was a mormon pretty strict mormon and he did not smoke or drink and of course we know db cooper did have at least one alcoholic drink on the flight and he smoked eight raleigh filter tip cigarettes and mccoy was a pretty strict non-smoker of course being a mormon of course i don't think they're supposed to uh hijack airplanes either but uh apparently mccoy well not apparently he did hijack a uh, airliner just like db cooper did but he asked for a bigger ransom he asked for five hundred thousand dollars in cash and uh everything mccoy did was kind of a uh, you know he's very nervous on the flight he left his uh, hijack instructions in the waiting area so they had to be brought to him a person that worked for the airline actually walked on the plane and held up the the envelope and said hey anybody leave these in the waiting area and of course mccoy had just come out of the lavatory on the airplane and he quickly claimed it said yeah that's mine uh if that uh, agent for the airline had only looked in that envelope his whole thing would have been been up you know just blown up right there literally no pun intended so uh, there's just so many things that, that McCoy did uh, wrong, but he did get away with it. But he bragged to a Utah a state trooper that he was going to do something like D.B. Cooper, but he would ask for 500000 So uh, he already left uh, you know, some, bad, uh, some bad things out there that got him caught quickly, got caught two days later. Ironically enough, after McCoy did his skyjacking and got back, he was working for the Utah State Guard. So he was actually called in to go search for himself 
which is pretty funny. I mean, he was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam, so he was an accomplished helicopter pilot, and he flew a helicopter for the Utah State Guard. So he was actually called in to go look for himself, which is pretty funny. Uh, but Ed McCoy got caught, got put in jail. He broke out of jail, and he got caught in, um, he got in a gunfight with the FBI. He got shot and killed in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And uh, a, really, a really great story, but he was not D.B. Cooper. He had really big ears that stuck out, and any of the witnesses to D.B. Cooper didn't see big ears like that. Same goes for uh, a suspect named Dwayne Weber. Real interesting, uh, Dwayne Weber, his wife said that uh, her husband, Dwayne, confessed to her that he was D.B. Cooper on his deathbed. She said she had seen the ticket that he had from Flight 305. And uh, apparently his wife, who passed away recently, her name was Joe Weber, had a lot of knowledge that people could never really figure out where she got that was in FBI files that weren't released yet. So it makes a really interesting story. Uh, of course, Robert Rackstraw, pretty popular suspect. He was a Vietnam vet, helicopter pilot like uh, Richard McCoy, pretty brave helicopter pilot, skilled at it. He was thrown out of the military because he lied about his education. And I talk about all these suspects in, in greater detail on um, some other YouTube videos, so definitely check that out. But uh, the best thing to commemorate this thing and watch is a podcast done by The Vanish Podcast with Chris Williamson that I'm a part of, and also Darren Schaefer is a part of that. He's the host of the Cooper Vortex. It's all D.B. Cooper podcast. I've done a couple episodes on that. You want to check out for sure. Nicholas Broughton is uh, also a guest on The Vanish Podcast, and it just came out today on the 50th anniversary, so I'll put a link to that podcast in this video and it's going to just cover lots of things uh darren shaver goes through the suspects of course if you want a whole lot of detail on each suspect definitely go to the db cooper uh what they call the cooper vortex actually is darren shaver's podcast so uh, they all get covered there and um it should be good and if you listen to the entire podcast you'll find out what's in this envelope at the end and this this could be the key to lots of things in the db cooper case uh in my opinion so, um, you know, last but not least, just talking about my favorite suspect, a guy named Ted B. Braden, who was, as I mentioned, he was a Special Forces member in, in 1965, 1966, Mac V. Sog, black ops guy, very interesting, lied about his age, went and got, fought in World War II at the age of 16. Uh, he was in the Battle of the Bulge. He did some uh, some jumps during World War II. So this guy was already a hard combat vet, but by the time he was 17, he was just, uh, he excelled at... Uh, all things military, fighting, guns, everything connected to the military. But what he was the most skilled at was jumping out of airplanes. He was a uh, parachute instructor at Fort Benning, Georgia for a long time. And of course, he did lots of daring jumps into Laos over in Vietnam. He was uh, a member of an army parachuting team called the Golden Arrows, where he won competitions all over Europe in the early 60s. And uh, I got to know his uh, one of his teammates, Al Tire who uh, firmly believes that his uh, uh, teammate from the Golden Arrows, Ted Braden, was in fact D.B. Cooper. And I love Al's story. You'll hear it on that podcast, and you'll hear it on my channel about uh, Al's experience with Ted Braden and uh, some hints that he gave him that he was possibly the man that jumped out of that plane uh, 50 years ago today. So you definitely want to check that out. Uh, my book, Paratrooper Fortune, talks about Ted Braden. Of course, it's about him and other videos on this channel, but I did not want this day to go by without commemorating it, because no matter who D.B. Cooper was, uh, if I'm wrong, I might be, but I still want to know who he is. Whoever it is, if it's Kenny Christensen, if it's Rackstraw, if it's somebody we've never heard of, I still got to know. I want to know who it is. Uh, I feel like Ted is the best uh, candidate to this point from my personal research, uh, but his story is so fascinating. What I do know about him, uh, I figured out, you know, hey, just tell the story and then just say, hey, here's his bona fides for being D.B. Cooper. And he's, like I read on Reddit not long ago on a D.B. Cooper message board, it said if you had to invent a D.B. Cooper candidate, you'd invent Ted Braden. And I couldn't have said it better myself. This guy just had all the goods. Uh, so you definitely want to check more about him out. But uh, 50th, love this case. I'm going to do some uh, some live stuff in the future, be Zodiac, maybe some more on D.B. Cooper. Also, check out uh, my Subscribe Star channel. And of course, that's all uh, the Zodcast uh, in-depth stuff about uh, that whole uh, the Zodiac case. So thanks for watching. Happy D.B. Cooper days. I'd like to thank uh, Chris Williamson with the Vanish Podcast, uh, Darren Schaefer with the Cooper Vortex, and Nicholas Broughton, a uh, really great D.B. Cooper researcher for all his help as well. Thanks for watching.